Today, I'm going to be ranking every single character in multiverses up until the release of Morty, which was just earlier today. I do think that we have a pretty good idea of where Morty is going to be on the tier list, so he will be included. But this should give you guys a really good idea of who's very strong right now with the meta because there's been two huge balance change like patch notes that have come out recently. So with that, let's get into the list. The rules with this are very simple. We're assuming that this is a 1v1 tier list only. I can make a 2v2 tier list if you guys want, but this will be specifically for 1v1s. And the only other prerequisite is that these are top 1k matches. So it's not like the best of the best, but it's to the point where people know what they're doing and how to play their characters. First off is Arya, and I think she is definitely in the A tier. There was an update just earlier today with the release of Morty that changed the assassins and how they work at a fundamental level. Used to be assassins took 14% more damage by default from every single source. Now they only take 5% more damage. I think this should be just removed entirely in my opinion, but I like the step this is taking in the direction of assassins being pushed more and more into the meta. But with that, Arya's biggest problem, which is that she's the lightest character in the game and takes 14% more damage, has now been made a bit more bearable. So I think that she fits pretty well into the A tier. Next up is Batman, and he is definitely going in the S tier. This is like an undebatable. The only people that I've seen not think Batman is OP is Batman mains, but anybody that mains a character can't really give a 100% unbiased opinion on them, myself included. I don't really have a main. I kind of bounce around between a bunch of characters because I like to make videos on a bunch of different characters, but I would say my main at the moment is probably either Arya or Harley. So just to give you guys a little bit of an idea, like I do have a little bit of bias on both these people. Batman is crazy, crazy broken right now. It's kind of unbelievable. His battering is the best projectile in the game, undoubtedly. On top of his battering, he has the fastest base movement speed in the game, which I personally don't think should be how the game is. The assassins should be faster than any other class because that's the role that they play. But for some reason, Batman is the fastest. He's also incredibly fast in the air, has amazing recovery with his grappling hook, as well as his like faster side to side movement with his cloak. Kind of crazy all around the board. His melee attacks are some of the fastest in the game, along with Shaggy, how they can just kind of spam those close range melee attacks over and over and over. And there's not really much opportunity to get out of them or have a reset. If a Batman just sticks to you, the entire match, there's really not much you can do. And then if you ever manage to get away from him for two seconds, he can just throw the Batarang that can be controlled to change directions and come back around and hit you. All in all, Batman is really, really, really strong right now, and I'm hoping to God he gets nerfed soon. I don't want Batman to be terrible. I don't think that they should gut him or anything. I just think that he's too strong right now. Next up is Bugs, who still sits comfortably in the S tier up there with Batman. The recent update did nerf Bugs a little bit, but it wasn't really enough to knock him out of S tier. It was just kind of enough to dethrone him from being the best character in the game. Bugs is still incredibly solid, and if you're still manning Bugs, you should have no problem winning a lot of your matches. Bugs excels at everything in the game. There is no range he can't play. There is no matchup he can't play. There is no map he can't play. He is great at everything across the board. Next up is Harley, who I think is also going in the A tier with Harley, especially with this recent change to the assassins that make them only take 5% more damage. She's just going to sit even more comfortably in A tier. If there was any chance before of her being knocked down to B tier, which I don't really think there was, but some people thought that she wasn't that great. I don't think anyone can disagree now. Harley belongs in A tier. Her combos are kind of crazy, although her infinite is removed. Well, it's like 99% removed, but they have said that they're completely removing it in the uh, uh, hitbox and hurtbox update coming soon. So I'm just going to treat the infinite like it's not there. If you look at Harley's kit objectively without the infinite, it's still very strong, but not to the point of being an S tier in my opinion. Either of these characters can shut down Harley very easily, but I do think that she belongs up there in the like A tier, which is like the great tier. Next up is Finn, who I think will also sit in A tier. Finn did get nerfed, which I think did definitely knock him out of S tier. Every time I go up against a Finn now, I actually like have a chance and I feel like I'm winning a lot more matches against Finn, whereas before a Finn could just be up in your face the entire match and there wasn't much counterplay you could have. Finn had very, very, very little whiff recovery, so he could just spam his attacks the entire game, and if he missed, oh well, he can just turn around and hit you again right away. But now that's kind of been fixed a little bit. He doesn't feel slow by any means. He's still very fast, especially with the speed boots, but I do think that he's not up to the point of being, like, game-breakingly broken. So I think he belongs in A tier. Next up is Jake, who I really thought about this for a while, and I think I will put him in S tier. I could easily see the argument being made that he's A tier and not S tier. I think that depending on who you ask, he's bouncing between these two, but in my opinion, Jake, it goes in S. Jake just has very good all-around attacks. Very similar to Bugs and Batman, he can play any range well. It doesn't really matter what the other person does. Jake can match that. No matter where they decide to play, what character they're playing, what play style they have, Jake can match the pace of the game. His long punch and his house, like his down slam ability, are both very, very strong right now, along with having great recovery with his stretch ability. All around, just a super, super solid character. I don't think he's broken like Bugs and Batman are, but he's very, very strong. Next up is Garnet, who I'm going to throw in the B tier. I don't think Garnet is great 
at anything. I think Garnet is definitely solid all around, definitely playable. There should be no problems where you're like, oh, I just lose the game because I'm Garnet. But she's just not great and definitely not like broken. Next up is Reindeer. Dude, what am I saying? Next up is Rain Dog, who I'm going to throw in the C tier. I truly think that Rain Dog just struggles at being good at nothing. He has really good projectile spam, I guess, but like a lot of characters can counter projectile spam, so it doesn't really matter that much. And if you look objectively at all the projectiles in the game, Rain Dog doesn't even have the best projectiles, doesn't have really good light attack spam, doesn't have really good special attacks, doesn't have great recovery. Rain Dog just isn't a great pick right now. I have seen some people play really well with Rain Dog, and it's possible, which is why I'm not putting him in the D tier, but you probably shouldn't be playing Rain Dog. Next up is Shaggy, who I'm going to put in the A tier. Shaggy is still very, very strong. I see like a super common misconception about Shaggy that he's weak just because he's the easiest character in the game. But even though he's the easiest and most like simple and straightforward character in the game, he's still so strong. He plays up in your face very, very, very well. And because he's so easy and simple, his kit is super forgiving. Like you don't have to be really like thought out with your attacks or like actually have a strategy. You can just go in the game and kind of button mash. Shaggy is one of the very few characters in the game where button mashing can succeed. I do think that this game does punish button mashing pretty well with the whiff recovery and the amount of like projectiles there are. But Shaggy is kind of the uh, the deal breaker there. Next up is Superman, who I'm going to throw in the B tier. A lot of people think Superman is OP. He's really not. I haven't really struggled to play against Superman's recently. I don't think there's been a specific nerf that's done that. Maybe the ice nerf, but he's just not that great. His grab is annoying. Yes, it's it's really annoying to get grabbed and thrown off the stage. But like realistically, you shouldn't be getting grabbed because when he's in that grab, he doesn't have much of a turn radius. So you can just jump over him. So if you're just avoiding the grab... The only other thing about his kit that could make him like broken is his armor. But if you play around the armor, use armor break perks, use armor break characters, which there's a lot of those in this game. Realistically, in the top matches, you should be bringing armor break into your kit basically every game because of the amount of armor that all of these characters have. So Superman, I think fits pretty well in the beats here. Definitely usable. You can definitely succeed with him, but I just don't think he's broken. Steven Universe coming up next, and I'm going to throw him in the beats here as well. Steven is kind of like Garnet. Um, he, he's good at a lot, but he's not really great at anything. And he doesn't really have any like meta abilities right now. Now, there's nothing about him that you see and you're just like, dang, that is broken. That needs a nerf. That needs a fix. Whereas everybody in A tier or S tier has at least one ability where you could argue that it's broken. And the people in S tier, their whole kits are broken. Next up is Taz, who is unfortunately going to go back in the D tier. I put him in the D tier in my first list. I'm going to put him in the D tier again. Taz just sucks. I have seen some good Taz mains. There are always exceptions. People have been able to perform with the worst agents, but that doesn't mean that they're good. Taz is still just a very bad pick. I actually have seen them making moves to kind of bring him up and this recent balance change patch did have a buff for Taz, but it just wasn't enough. I could maybe see an argument for him being C tier, but I, I really just don't think Taz is great. Next up is Iron Giant, and I do think that Iron Giant is good. In my first tier list, I put him in the lowest tier and I kind of said that he was trash. At the time, he was pretty trash, but now a lot of people have figured out how to play around being like this big, slow, heavy tank. So he started to become played a lot more and a lot more at the high level. Iron Giant is good, but he's been hit relentlessly in these balance changes recently. The past two balance changes have both had big Iron Giant nerfs. And with those, with all the periods of like charge up that he kind of has in his abilities now and the frame amount where he like kind of stutters in the air before he does his down slam and like the amount of bolts that he needs to use his shield and the, how quick it runs out. And it just overall, I don't think Iron Giant is broken. I really don't. Most games that I play against Iron Giants, I run the stage with them because he's so easy to combo. At very, very high level, Iron Giant is still dominating. But again, this is a top 1k list. This isn't like a super, super high level list. Next up is Tom and Jerry, who is definitely going in the S tier. Although I think Tom and Jerry is the hardest character to play in the S tier, I do think that he's still extremely good. Tom and Jerry can be super, super frustrating to play against, especially against somebody that just spams the Jerry or plays very well with the Jerry. He's an unforgiving character. And if you throw your Jerry off the stage, you're kind of like a garbage character for a little while. Not garbage. He's still pretty solid without his Jerry even. But at the end of the day, you need his Jerry to do a lot of his OP combos, which makes him have a little bit of a skill ceiling because with all of these characters, you don't really need anything to do the combos. You're just broken by default. And then Tom and Jerry kind of takes some setting up before they're broken. Tom and Jerry is still an amazing pick. It just is going to take a while to learn him. You can't just pick him up and and be good with him like you can with the other three. Next up is Velma, who I'm going to throw in B tier. There's nothing crazy about Velma now that her exploit has been nerfed with the Jake bug where she could do like unlimited homing speech bubbles. She's just really not that good. I don't think she's great at anything. She's in a similar situation to Garnet and Steven where she's she's good, but she's not great at anything. Nothing to write home about, you know? Next up is Wonder Woman, and I'm going to throw Wonder Woman in A tier. I think that Wonder Woman is super, super solid right now. In the previous two lists, I put her a lot lower, but recently I've seen a lot more Wonder Woman's playing super well against me, and I've kind of saw like the potential that she has now. She's super Super, super super quick and her attacks are pretty big in like the hitbox category she can hit you with some pretty ridiculous attacks and get you in some pretty ridiculous combos and she's just fast
fast. She's really hard to like take a reset and get a breather and kind of figure out what you're doing because she can just stick on you the entire match. In the same way that kind of Shaggy or Finn or Harley or Batman can do, she can also do that just a little bit worse than them. Next up is LeBron and I'm going to throw him in the C tier. LeBron's not that good. I don't know what to tell you. He's just all around bad. I don't even know how to like go in more depth about him. His dunk is pretty bad now that it has that shockwave removed. He's kind of useless without his ball and trying to get the ball back. Hitting that grab is super annoying. He's just not good. And last but not least, we have Morty. This may be a controversial pick because it is so early in the season. It literally came out today. But Morty, I'm throwing him an S tier. This is brave, but I really, really, really expect to see a lot of Morty being played in high-level lobbies and dominating in high-level lobbies. I think that within the next couple weeks, there's going to be a pretty big nerf coming out to Morty. Right now, nobody's really figured out the full potential of him and like how to play him super well. And I'm not saying that I have. I'm not great with Morty. If you want to check out the video of me playing him, it, it'll be up here. It didn't go great. But like, I was still hitting some pretty nice combos with that I didn't even know what I was hitting. I was just doing it. And he just has such a diverse kit. After playing with him for like four or five hours, I can confidently say he can do everything. It's the same as Tom and Jerry. It's the same as all the characters in S tier. He can play any range, any character, any map, any matchup. All in all, he's super, super good. I'm putting him at the lowest point in S tier because I kind of think that we need some time to see his potential and see if he's going to deserve to be up here or at the very bottom. Who knows? But yeah, that's the complete list for me, in my opinion. Again, this is all my personal opinion. Some of this, to a degree, is like objectively true, but other things you could argue, like if you said anything on this list moves up or down one tier, I could definitely have that argument with you. I don't think anything on this list is like obscenely broken or obscenely terrible. In the first tier list, the meta and the S tier was like so engraved that anybody that thought that those weren't S tier was just not smart. But right now, that's actually a good bit of diversity in the game. I'm not seeing a super, super dominant, like, two-character meta. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the balance of the game right now. There could definitely be some tweaks, but I think this is a pretty solid list. Of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Try to keep everything friendly. I don't want to see a bunch of arguments happening in the comments. But, yeah, any controversial takes, drop them down below. Let's see them. See you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace out.